about WWJD. Right. Now some of you all may be familiar and not, but it was back in the day, what would Jesus do? Right. We had bracelets, yeah. we even had those t-shirts. Yeah. I wore, I wore them sometimes for fashion, but I do admit I wore it for like a Christian fashion. But guess what? I just wore it. I didn't think about the meaning of the words when I was speaking. I didn't even think about the meaning of the words when I was spending money. I didn't ask what would Jesus do in any situations. My appeal to each of you this morning is bring it back. Bring back WWJD. But guess what? With a deeper and richer meaning. Before speaking without clarity, before spending on wants and needs, and we hadn't paid our tithes, don't respond impulsive. Stop, think, and pray in all situations before you react. Do exactly what those letters were designed to do. Consider before any action, WWJD, what would Jesus do? May we pray? Father, help us to be willing to hear your answer and obey it. Thank you for being our God. Help us to stop, think, and pray before we react. I pray that we will be open and obedient to do what you ask. Help us to let go of control and let you take the lead. Thank you that you are always with us. Cover this church, our leaders, and each family represented with your care. We thank you for your grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah today. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. How many of you came to bless the name of the Lord today? Glory to God. I want all of you to stand on your feet. Get on your feet. If God has done anything for you, get on your feet and praise the name of the Lord. If you can get on your feet, get on your feet. God is great and he is greatly to be praised. We didn't come here for show. We came 
designed for that so that we can invite God in his spirit. I love what Miss Baldwin said. And when I say when you're in tune with the spirit, I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning, and which is uncommon, not, not uncommon. Um, and I know they said if, if God wakes you up between the hours and three or six, it's whatever, whatever the watch is. And I was laying there. I'm going to say this. Change is sometimes hard. It is uncomfortable. You have to check yourself. <laughs> and so I had to check myself this morning because I'm going to tell you, um, our leader challenges us to just empty out ourselves and hear from God. So, because this is about what God wants, and it's not about what I want, it's not about what you want, it's not even about y'all. Right. And see, where I was missing it was, it was like, okay, are the people going to respond? He said, no, it's not about whether the people respond, it's how God responds. I'm paraphrasing, but ultimately that's what it is. So if I, we're here, and we're here, for the glory of God. Let's be here for the glory of God. All of y'all pulled up in something nice out there. You walked in here, or even if you rolled in here, if you slid in here, whatever the situation is, you were here, you are here. You can lift your hand. You can bless the name of the Lord. And it ain't about me, and I don't really care if you do it or not. But I know what I'm going to do. I came to bless the name of the Lord, and I want you to join us today as we, de as we declare how great our God is. Amen. Amen.
will come in and he will try to silence you. But I will forever, forever give God my praise. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands and worship. Say, I'll praise you, Lord. declare that God is a healer over my body. Hallelujah. Every ache, every pain we put under the devil's feet, Father God, and we loose his Holy Spirit throughout my body, Lord God. Lord, we declare that everything, everything in my body operates the way that it was designed to operate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll pray Praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Give God a head clap of praise if you're gonna forever praise his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest in this place. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord is worthy, is he not? He is worthy, and we cannot take it lightly because he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords over my life, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, don't sit down. Don't sit down. This is a wonderful place. Come on, we didn't, we didn't come to sit. Come on. Come on, come on, all over the building. Come on and worship with us today. Come on and worship with us today. Lift your hands and just tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Just whisper to him, tell him, thank you for all of the wonderful things that he has done for you. If it had not been for him on our side, Lord, where would we be, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're still declaring that God is great, amen.
Jesus, 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 just ignorant, gullible, and just dumb, right? Well, I was 14 because I was in high school, and I met this guy, right? And I'm 14 years old, and I'm at my cousin's grandmother's house. Now, again, I'm 14. This dude was driving, so you know he had to be old. Now, again, this is my testimony. And again, I had to learn how to free myself from the bondage of people because how people get free is by your testimony. You don't know who you can help by telling your testimony. That's why we are a living sacrifice, amen? We are a living sacrifice because we're supposed to help change people by telling them their, our experiences, amen? So we are at my, my cousin's grandmother's house and they, you know, I called and he was like, well, I'm gonna come and pick you up. And so we lied to her grandmother. And we was like, oh, she going to, it was vacation Bible school. And she said, she going to get clothes for vacation Bible school, right? I done left with this dude. They bring, I come to this house or whatever. There's another guy there. Now I'm gonna tell you how God works. There was nothing that happened nothing they did nothing we just sat there and we talked but that was God protecting me in my Say, ignorance amen that's right in my ignorance cuz them dudes could have did anything to me Thank you. I could have been on the news missing came up dead anything Say but when I tell you this right here ain't play for me this is serious for me because I love God and I like how he protects me in my ignorance. And so when we learn how to pour out ourselves before God, 
even in our mess and allow him to clean us up. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus, how great you are. How great is our God. Sing with me. On a Sunday just like this, there was a Sunday school class meeting at a church, and this was a class of fifth graders. These fifth graders were finishing up their class, and the teacher was quizzing them, and the quiz was about salvation and heaven. She asked them questions. It was a series of questions, and she asked them, number one, what will it take to get into heaven? One of the little kids said that uh, we have to clean our rooms. That'll get us into heaven. And she said, are you saying that if I wash all my dishes, I'll get to heaven? And they said, no. She said, if I plant flowers in the yard and mow the lawn every week, will I get to heaven? They said, no. They said, if we obey our parents and love our friends, will I get to heaven? They said, no. Teacher said, um, but what, what do I have to do? One little kid who was new in the class and just moved to town and he didn't know all the answers to the lesson he said, first of all, you got to die. <laughs> Teacher said, yeah, you're right. In order to go to heaven, you first have to die. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why we want to talk to you today about heaven. And we want to ask the question, is heaven for real? Because 100% of all of us in this room today are going to die. The only question on the table is when? It's going to happen. The question is when. But if we know that we're all going to die, and we all have to come to that, that, that very shaky date, why is it that we don't make preparations? Why is it that we don't, uh, we don't get our wills in order? We don't get our banking in order. We don't get our stuff in order. We don't get our spiritual life in order. We make more preparation and more plans for a vacation than we do on where we're going to spend eternity. We search the internet. We ask other people who have been. We look at maps of the place. We figure out how we're going to get there, and we gather up all of our money to make sure that we have the financial wherewithal to go where we're planning on going. But those fifth graders were smart. And they knew that all of the normal things that you think about when you're thinking about going to heaven, you don't have to do. Your house can be a shambles. Your car can be a mess. 
Your clothes can be all messed up. But one of the things that you have to do to get to heaven is you have to die. And that's the reason most of us don't want to really think about it because we think in our minds that we ain't going to ever die. We think we're never going to leave here. It's always, we're always going to be vital. We're always going to be young. We're always going to be healthy. But let me tell you something. You're not. You are going to die. I know that's a bad way to start a message, but I need for us to have a little reality therapy and understand that we didn't come here to stay. We are going to leave this place, and we're going to leave it at a time that is unknown to us, and many of us will not be ready. Many of us will not be prepared. Your stuff will be all messed up. When your name is called, you may not be ready. I mean, I think sometimes I have dreams. I dream sometimes that I'm going to officiate a funeral, and I'm late. <laughs> and that actually happened to me. That ever happened to you? But it's one funeral you will not be late for. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> You will not be late for yours because the cemetery is going to get you there in time. You're going to make it. Hey, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you for those who are in this place. And we thank you, Father, for those who are watching and listening on Facebook and YouTube. We thank you for them, God. We thank you for their fellowship with us. We thank you, Father, for those who filled this room yesterday at the Leaf Pantry. And we thank, Father, Father, for all the volunteers who fill this room. The laughter, the conversation, the prayers, <clears throat> were all in your name. And, Father, we remember them because they're part of our church. Father, I thank you for the music that surrounds me and fills every crevice of this building. Thank you for the skill that you have given to men and women to sing and to bring sweet music into the atmosphere. Father, I pray right now that the word of God would be first and foremost on the lips of this pastor and in the hearts of these listeners. In the name of Jesus, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, last week we gave you five words that describe heaven. You remember what they were, class? The first one was renewal. You're going to get new stuff. You're going to get a new body. You're going to get a new heaven. You're going to get a new earth. And then the second word was the word reunion because we're all going to be reunited with individuals that we saw in life and we will know them. Release. We will get released from the bondage that we are experiencing right now. You will no more be bound by your past. You will no longer be bound by your future. You will no longer be bound by your worry, your guilt, your fear, your doubts. Reassignment. You are going to be reassigned. You may not work in A.D. in heaven. You may not work in a food pantry in heaven. You are going to have a reassignment. And God is going to assign you according to your love, according to what you enjoy, what gives you a smile. You will never get up in heaven on Monday morning and say, I dread going to my job. Because the job that God would have you doing is a job that he has built you for from your mother's womb. He is going to put you in a place where you can serve in a very special way. Rain. The fifth word that we share with you as a result of this new heaven and this new earth is rain. We're no longer going to be nobodies. We're going to be somebodies. We're going to be his, and we are going to have authority and responsibility. We are going to rule over nations. We're going to, we, are a, we are a reigning priesthood. All of God's children have royal DNA, DNA, blood, that keeps them connected to their royalty. 
And before I conclude part two of this message, I want to point out a few things that I think these five words mean to us. And I want you to, you know, get your highlighters, get your pens, because some people are worried about some of these things. And the first one is to put up your bucket list. Everybody in here has a bucket list of things that you want to do before you die. The only thing I want to do before I die is live. But you need to throw away your bucket list because your bucket list becomes obsolete when we're thinking in terms of heaven. Pastor, what in the world do you mean by that? Well, you have a bucket list because you make an assumption and an it's erroneous <laughs> assumption that in this life, this is the last chance that you're going to be able to do those things. You, you imagine that this is the, the house you're living in now. You're imagining that this is the last house I'm going to live in. The car you're riding in, this is the last car I'm going to ride in. This is my last chance to skydive. This is my last chance to have a romantic relationship. This is my last chance. But what your pastor wants to tell you today is your assumption is wrong. That's never true for a Christian, you are always going to get another chance because there's a new heaven and a new earth. And I'm going to show you what that means because it's exciting because you're going to get a new you. You're going to get a more improved you and you're going to get a greater, more improved version of all those things that you wanted to see and to do. How many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon? I have. It was a big old hole in the middle of the ground. It was a big hole, but I wanted to see it. It was on my bucket list. It was something I wanted to be able to look over the rim and walk out on that little glass and look down and be scared and be worried and everybody, you know, you took a picture and you went on home. And I don't go to the Grand Canyon every day, but it's something I wanted to do before I die. But just imagine this. God is going to give us a new heaven and a new earth and the things that he's going to show us are going to be so much greater than the Grand Canyon that you're going to pale in comparison because the Grand Canyon ain't going to be about nothing because God is going to show us something even better. When Jesus says he's making all things new, remember that. Chapter 21, book of Revelations, remember he said I'm going to make all things new. Doesn't that include the mountains? You've never climbed Mount Everest, and you don't have to imagine that you have to climb Mount Everest in this life because God is going to make all things new. And you're going to have plenty of time on your hands. You're not going to have to work a double shift, and you're not going to have to work a second job because you're going to have plenty of time. You are not going to have to work the weekends because you are going to have lots of time all of eternity in heaven. And if God is going to create new heaven, new earth, don't you know he's going to create new mountains? He's going to create some bigger, greater, better than Mount Everest, better than Red Mountain, better than Appalachians, better than the Rockies. He's going to create all those. And he's going to create rivers, I mean mountains. He's also going to give us new rivers. <laughs> He's going to give us new oceans. He's going to give us new planets and all of these things. New animals, new culture, new art, new music, architecture, and extreme sports that you never got to do on earth. I never got to skydive in this life, and I don't intend to. But in heaven, I get a chance to if I want to. I don't want to. No need to jump out of a perfectly good airplane or off of a perfectly good mountain. You leave that to the people who don't have better sense. But if you are the person who feels like, I got to do this before I die, understand that death is not the end of your having a good time and experiencing the things that, and y'all looking at me like, now, Pastor, now, I thought heaven was just one of these ethereal places where we had clouds and harps and angels and cherubs and all this stuff. It's all of that, but it's more. It's more. It's more than you ever imagined. The Word of God says that it is true. Does your Bible have an asterisk with the list of things in fine print 
that are not included in that contract? When God said, I'm going to make all things new? No, you know, ask your cup there, list in all the things that, now I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, I'm excluding some stuff. No, God said, I'm going to make all things new. I'm going to make your messed up hips new. I'm going to make your unfunctioning heart new. I'm going to make your whacked out brain new. I'm going to make everything brand new. And when I make it brand new, it's going to be like what you remember, but it's going to be more better. Y'all don't get it. All means all. Revolution, uh, Revelation 21 verse 26 even says that they will bring into it, heaven, the glory and honor of the nations. Now, I used to read past that verse and didn't thoroughly understand it, but that has to mean the best of culture. We're going to bring from this earth the best of what we have. I mean, just think about that for just a minute. The best soul food is going to be brought from the nations. That's right, Sharita. It's going to be the best soul food from earth manifested in heaven, but because it's in heaven, <laughs> it's going to be brand new, and it's going to be more better. The best ancient architecture. When you have traveled and looked at pictures and seen things in Greece and Rome and Italy, you look around and you say, oh man, they'll never make anything like this ever again. You ain't seen nothing yet. Because see, this architecture, these paintings, all of these great works of art that you have seen on earth, you'll see them in heaven. They're just going to be better because they will not be tainted by the presence of sin. They're going to be perfect. Now, don't stop there. We know everybody doesn't appreciate Renaissance art. We know everybody doesn't appreciate architecture. I mean, you know, Christian does because he's an architect. But ladies and gentlemen, most of us, we don't, we don't care whether they're columns or whether the style is Georgian or Virginian. We don't care. All we want is a nice-looking house and a door that locks. That's all we want. But the best is going to be in heaven and even some of the things that you don't even think about. The best of hip-hop and rap. That's right. It's going to be in heaven. The best of it. When you get to heaven, the culture of this community, we're going to take it into heaven. The best of Disney World. Something you have to pay three or four hundred dollars a day to enjoy, and a seven or eight hundred dollars to get there. You're going to find a glorified version of Disney World. Can you imagine that? Small world. Going through those little rides and all that stuff. You're going to be entertained in heaven the same way. But it's just going to be better. It's just going to be perfect. And you will not have to stand in line. It will be there for your taking. Mardi Gras. Ain't much there, but that what's good out of Mardi Gras will go too. All this is going to heaven. That's what the scripture says. They will bring into it, heaven, the glory and honor of the nations. So even the man-made things, the things that we didn't get to experience on earth, we'll experience there. Now, Pastor, are you trying to put something on us that, you know, I've never heard this before. I mean, I, 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 heaven is supposed to be like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we need to read the scripture. We need to read the travel brochure. I mean, if you're going to spend eternity there, you ought to know what it's going to be like. New heaven, new earth. That's what it says. It's going to be made over. A lot of people think that it's just going to be a place up in the clouds. Just something that's just wispy. But ladies and gentlemen, understand, in John the 14th chapter, it says, I go to prepare a place 
for you. In my Father's house, there are many rooms or mansions. There are many dwelling places, and those places are for you and me. God is preparing this place. It is a real place. John on the Isle of Patmos says 14 years ago when he wrote it, he said, I went there. And he talks about three heavens. I mean, don't get it all messed up. Get it understood. There are more, there's more than one heaven. Oh, pastor, you're putting in heresy now. No, I'm not. I mean, this is in the word of God. There's the first heaven. And that is the place where the birds fly. That's the first heaven. There's a second heaven where the stars and the moon and all that stuff are. But John says that he was caught up in the what? heaven the third heaven if there were three then there had to be one and two one is where the birds fly two is where the stars and the moon hang third is where God resides where is heaven class heaven is up how do you know this because Jesus ascended into heaven he did not descend he descended into Sheol he descended into hell and he paid the price for our sins but when he came back and was resurrected he ascended he went up into heaven now isn't that wonderful now ladies and gentlemen we need to understand the difference between up and down some people are going up some people are going down I want to be a part of the crowd that goes up I don't want to be a part of the crowd that goes down One thing that we can't do there, that we can do here, is we can't tell nobody about Jesus in heaven. Because they already know Jesus. They already have had conversation with Jesus and they had a relationship with him and accepted him before they did what class? Before they died. So you can't tell anybody, Vaughn, you can't have an evangelism program through heaven saying, let me tell you about Jesus, because they already know. So our bucket list ought not to be a bucket list of things that we might not get to do before we go to heaven. Our bucket list ought to be exchanged for a fish bucket where we are gathering up the souls of men and women. We ought to be fishing for them on this planet now because this is our work. This is what we're supposed to be doing now, not trying to complete some stupid bucket list. But ladies and gentlemen, what we do is we waste our time, we waste our money, we waste our energy, we waste our youth on going out trying to get stuff that there's going to be a better version of in heaven. We go out and buy fake Gucci purses to impress people that we don't even like. We buy cubic zirconium in sizes this big because we can't afford a $1,000 diamond ring. Ladies and gentlemen, that is fake stuff, and that is what we use to replace the good stuff that we want. What a waste of time. We waste our love and we waste our energy by having sex that has no meaning. We waste our money buying things that don't help us and don't help anybody else. We gather around us things that we think will make us happy. And the more we have, the unhappier we are because we realize that money can't buy your happiness. Money can't buy your love. And we have a problem because we don't get it that it's all going to be better in heaven. Put winning people to Jesus on your bucket list. So the first thing that we gain from these five words that I shared with you last week and repeated to you this week is to put up your bucket list. Second thing is stop being depressed about your age. Stop being depressed about your age. You colored your hair long enough. You have covered up with new style clothing the body that has grown through the years. Gravity is gonna have is gonna win. Always. Gravity's gonna win. Everything's gonna fall. I don't care how much you pick it up, I don't care how much you squeeze it up. 
gravity is going to have its say. So you're going to age. But I dare anybody in faith church to walk around and say, oh, I don't get old now. No, no, no. You are older. There's no termination to age, and you call it, I'm old. What age is that? You are older, and older is a blessing because the alternative is you ain't getting no older. And when you stop getting older, that means you stop living. You need to keep on getting older because you need to keep on living. Amen? So we got rid of our bucket list. We need to stop worrying and being depressed, really bothered about aging. It depresses you to watch your beauty fade or to feel your body decline. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. You look in the mirror, and you're not the person. You ask yourself, who is that looking back in the mirror at me? It's you. It's you. You look at them old photographs that you took back in the 60s, and you had hair. You had a real six-pack. You had, you know, it seemed like you were taller. You were more charming. Now, you don't look like that. But guess what? That's a good sign, because that means you're still here. Listen, I get it. I get it. I really get it. I, I already, I'm already feeling this. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, and all I did all night, the night before, was sleep. I didn't do nothing but sleep. The greatest exercise I did was to turn over. And that makes me sore. And sometimes, somehow, going from one sleeping position to another strained my body, and I'm hurting all over. Come on, you feel me? You feel yourself? <laughs> Don't get depressed about that. Brothers and sisters, good news. I got good news. You ready for the good news? Here's the good news. I've got a glorified body <laughs> waiting on me in heaven. This foot that sometimes aches for no reason ain't going to ache in heaven. This pancreas that doesn't produce insulin the way it's supposed to, <laughs> it's going to work just fine in heaven. I already told you last week, everything is going to be good for me. Broccoli, which I hate, is going to be something that will make you gain weight. And ice cream and Krispy Kreme donuts. Thank you very much, Angel, for sending me that picture of Krispy Kreme. It made me get off of my, uh, you know, fast, and you made me eat too. So I'm going to put that one on you. We have to understand that we're getting a glorified body. You may be uh, like a 42, 36, 52 now, brother. But let me tell you something. Your new body is going to be perfect. The, eight, the, the lady angels are going to look at you and say, wow. <laughs> the end angels are even going to look at you and say, oh, my God. I joke, but at the same time, I'm telling you the truth. You're going to have a glorified body. Think about how Christ's body was glorified. It was awesome. His body was so amazing. I mean, if he wanted to go somewhere, he just, bam, he just went. He wanted to go through an, into another room. He wouldn't look for the door. Man, he just materialized. Wouldn't that be something? If you could go to a sporting event and not have to hunt for a parking place, you just show up on the 50-yard line. Bam! Go to a basketball game, sit on a court. You just right down there, right in the sweat of all the players. Ladies and gentlemen, heaven is going to be an amazing place. Don't worry about your aging because you're going to get a body that's going to replace the one that you have now. In fact, not just your body, because I don't need you to worry and be depressed about passing your peak. Um, a better version of your mind. Beverly and I exchange jabs at each other every now and then, you know, when we go to a room and forget what we went to the room for. I mean, we go to the pantry and we forget what we went in there to get. 
we, you know, sometimes just forget stuff. And that has nothing to, it has nothing to do with age. I've seen some young people do that, so don't worry about that. But you're going to get a brand new mind. You're not going to forget anything. Every time you go somewhere to pick up something, you're going to know what you went to get. It is always going to be there. Your muscles are going to be better. If you could bench press, press 300 pounds back in the day, in heaven you'll be able to bench press 600 or 1,000 because God is going to give you renewed muscles. Your beauty, all of that stuff is waiting for you in heaven. Forget What's that stuff? Bobby Brown. Forget that. Forget, what's that little pink lady stuff? Huh? M Mary Kay? Is that it? Forget Mary Kay. You know, forget Mary Kate too. Forget all of them. Because you're going to have a, a beauty that is unsurpassed. It is going to be absolutely perfect. You won't have to go to the African braid place to get your hair all braided down and spend half a day doing it you will just be able to be natural and beautiful. One to Wazuri. I wonder does that really mean you are beautiful, use Afrosheen. I don't know, but I remember that. That's, does that, ah, no, I don't think that means anything. I think it's just an advertising phrase. People, people have often asked me, because we just talking about heaven, right? I mean, have we learned anything about heaven? I know I joke a lot, but have we learned a little bit about heaven? I want you to really get it. People sometimes ask me, I think it was Kim asked me some years ago if, uh, if dogs go to heaven. And back then I, I practiced and, uh, you know, tough truth. And I said, no, dogs don't have souls. They don't live eternally. But now what I do is I say, you know, you know what? It's a new heaven. It's a new earth. It has a healed version of all that we love down here. If you loved your dog and your dog passed away, then, you know, it's possible. Who knows? I don't know. Bible doesn't say. Bible doesn't say. Now, it's still true that the dog doesn't have a soul. That's true. But, you know, if it makes you feel better, yeah, dog might be there. You figure it out. Now, cats, that's another story. I'll talk, about, I'll talk about that when we talk about hell. But that's just not, that's, we don't have to worry about that. See, you're going to put your bucket list away. You're going to stop being depressed about aging. You no longer look like Denzel Washington. Give Denzel about five more years. Denzel Washington is going to want to look like somebody else because, see, we're aging. We are aging. But remember, we've got a new body in the new heaven. But see, let's teach our kids that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Let's teach our kids that. When we think about heaven, let, let, let's, let's, let's tell them that. And here is what I see in scripture, and you've seen it too, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has ever, ever even entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Wow. You can't even imagine it. You can't even think of how great what God has in store for you but God made it that he is the giver of every good and perfect. Perfect means without flaw, and it means complete. Every perfect gift, and that they can trust him in life and in death. Wow. If you're going to trust somebody, it ought to be God. I mean, as much as I like smoke, man... I don't trust smoke no further than I can throw him, but I trust God. I trust smoke too, but I trust God more. The understand what you're longing for. See, everybody in here is longing for something, wishing for something, Deborah, hoping for something, trying to find something. C.S. Lewis, that great prolific writer, once said that the 
the fact that we long for something beyond the grave as a, a grave is a strong indication that that thing actually exists. If we wish for something and we don't know what it is, trust me, the reason you long for it, the reason you wish for it is because it's there. People sometimes say, especially young people, they will say, there's got to be more to life than this. And when you think that, that's because it is. It is more than this. It is more than what you're experiencing. And the fact that you are yearning for it, the fact that you're trying to find it, is an indicator that it's there. Now the question is, are you going to go after it or are you not? We long to step out of the sea of time onto the land of eternity. That's what we want to do. We want to imagine what heaven is really like. Doesn't that show that we were created for eternity? I mean, really get this. We must have been created for eternity. If I find myself in a, uh, with a desire which nothing in the world can satisfy, I got a desire, but ain't nothing in Birmingham, nothing in Alabama, nothing in, a, nothing in the world can satisfy, but I got that desire. I have to make a conclusion. And the best argument is this, that I was created for another world. And I want you to know that you were not created for this world. You were created for heaven. And the reason you are yearning for something more than what you have and more than what you can see is because God wants your heart, mind, and spirit pointed toward that thing and that place. It is heaven. Listen, some of you struggle to believe. I know that. I get it. I understand. But I want you to wrestle with the fact that there's something in you that knows that you were created for more than simply surviving and procreating. You're here for more than that. That love you feel, the longing for meaning that you have, these are not just illusions created by chemicals in your brain programmed by evolution as a survival mechanism to help us propagate our DNA. You long for meaning and eternity because you were created with meaning. And I know this is getting a little philosophical and deep, but you know, just excuse me for a minute. By an eternal God who sees beyond where you are now to where he intends for you to be. When your children are coming along and they're saying, I want to be a fireman, you know, or I want to be a lawyer, or I want to be, see at some point in time, we have to tell them, okay, here's the pathway that you have to take in order to be that thing. Here are the expectations that you have to have if you want to go in that direction. God already knows. In fact, he knew you from your mother's room. He knitted you in your mother's room. He knew exactly what your proclivities were. He knew where you were going to go. He knew what you were going to be good at and what you were going to enjoy. And what God is saying is, I give you those desires so that you can have a good time down here, but there's going to come a time when you're going to have eternal goodness and it's going to be in heaven. If I find in myself a desire which nothing in the world can satisfy, it means that I was created for another world and another world is heaven. Well, as much as I want to, I can't end this message only talking about heaven. I need, I need to tell you how to get there. Um, you know, back in the day, I would have given you a little paper map and said, you know, you are here and you need to go here and here's the route you take. Well, there's only one way and I don't have a paper map for you, but I do have a book that has 66 books inside of it. And I want to tell you that that book is your GPS system. That GPS system will get you from where you are to where you're designed to be, which is in heaven. And if you get off course, there is a sort of a Siri, a sort of a voice inside of the GPS, and it's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will say, recalculating. You're off track. You're going in the wrong direction. 
you have shifted toward sin. You've gone in a wrong direction. You're not going to where you're supposed to go. So it will say redirecting, rerouting. It'll put you back on the road if you listen to it and obey it. But how many of you listen to your GPS and sometimes just say, I'm a man and I can do it by myself? Amen. There are some Christians who will hear the voice of God's Holy Spirit speaking to you, letting you know you're marrying the wrong woman for the wrong reason. You're marrying the wrong man for the wrong reason. You are going after the wrong job for the wrong reason. You are walking in a path that will not get you to where I have destined you to go. And as a result, you need to change your course. You need to turn around. You need to get straight. You know, everybody in here gets uh, these little invitations from uh, credit card companies. Am I the only one? You, you get them, right? And what they do is they say, you are pre-approved. You're pre-approved. And all you have to do, you're pre-approved. All you have to do is fill out this application and send it in. Now, if you send that application in, it comes with benefits. It also comes with responsibilities. It comes with liabilities. We have to not only use it to buy, we have to pay it back according to the terms of the contract. God, through Jesus Christ, has given you a credit card pre-approval. Some of us are walking around with the contract in our pockets. We have that credit card application stamped up there pre-approved. He died so that you could have that pre-approval process. Now it's in your hands. Man, he's prepared this mansion for you. He's got a place for you. It's prepared. It's for perfect, prepared people. And you already have been approved to go there. The question is, are you going to turn in the application? And some of you come every day with the application in your heart, the application in your pocket. And you sit there and you look at Pastor like he's some kind of a dummy. You listen to the praise team. You get excited, but you don't go anywhere with it because you are not engaged in what is offered in this invitation. Now, I'm closing now, but I want you to know that you have been pre-approved. You have been pre-approved for a new body. Oh, you will pay $5,000 to get yourself some Botox, and you will pay $10,000 to get you some new hair. You will pay a lot of money to get stuff that ain't going to last long, and that stuff will go away. It will fade. It will mess up. It will tarnish. The car will get old, and it will lose its value. But ladies and gentlemen, the contract that you have in your hand, the application that you have in your heart, God is waiting on you to put your John Hancock on the dotted line. And some of us have, you know, we have sort of, you know, hijacked that thing. And we get in church and we look around and people think we got the credit card in our pocket. But ladies and gentlemen, you ain't got it because you have not applied for it. Oh, but Pastor, I joined the church back in 1960. But did you join Jesus? Did you get connected to him? Did you confess your sins? Did you repent of your sins? And did you receive by faith Jesus into your heart? If you did not, then you just got the application with pre-approval stamped across the front of it, and you are still not getting the benefits of the credit card. He has paid your debt. He has cleared your name. He has given you a reservation. Ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is to sign your paper. Sign it because your name has already been printed on there in the blood of Jesus Christ. He died for you. He went to prepare a place for you. It's called heaven. So why are you living in hell? Let's bow our hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this life. We thank you for the promise of a new heaven and a new earth. We thank you, Father, that age is not a hindrance. We thank you, Father, that we have an eternity, an eternity to praise and worship you. And, Father, we want to begin that process today. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over every person in this room. There's no such thing as one better or greater. We're all the same. We're all equal height at the foot of the cross. And Father, we are on our faces before you right now, 
confessing that we have been the worst in the worst way doing the worst things we've stolen we've robbed we've cheated we've lied we've been perverted we have done all manner of evil but father Jesus paid it all we are released and now father we're looking we're looking for the reunion we're looking for the release we're looking for the reassignment and we're looking for the privilege of reigning and father I'm praying right now that some man some woman some young person would make a decision today that I'm gonna put down my bucket list and I'm gonna pick up the cross of Christ and I am going to confess my sins I'm gonna die to myself and I'm gonna live for him my reward a new home called heaven and God thank you that it is a gated community not everybody gets in but those who get in are safe in the presence of our Lord there's no more crying there's no more dying and father we are delighted we almost see it we will have the opportunity simply because we've been pre-approved and we've accepted the pre-approval we'll get to see every person that we ever knew and father we'll get to see people that we never met but we will know them by their spirit we will know Moses and we will know our grandmothers and grandfathers and our children and our parents we will know them and they will know us but father I'm so glad that we'll be less concerned about reuniting with them <laughs> and we'll be more concerned about reuniting with Jesus thank you Lord amen ladies and gentlemen the doors of the church are open and we invite you right now you've got a pre-approved application for eternity in heaven now you faked off everybody else just because you showed up at church but your pastor needs for you to know that just showing up and being in the vicinity will not get you into God's kingdom you have to make a public display of your commitment and a confession of your sinful nature and an acceptance by faith of Jesus Christ so with that, ladies and gentlemen, the doors of the church are open. And I extend to you an invitation to give your life to Christ. I'm going to take my seat down front. But as I do that, praise team is going to sing. The altar is going to be open for prayer. And if you have a desire and a need to come to the altar, come and fall on your face before God. If it's to say nothing but thank you, do that not trying to force anybody this is not a routine but if you led by the Spirit of God you do come now if you choose to make a decision for Christ your pastor is extending to you a sincere invitation to come and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord accept the application he already died for you accept it and I'm gonna stand right here amen Praise team of sin.
You know, there are many ways that we can acknowledge the presence of God in our lives. One is to surrender. You've had that opportunity. The doors of the church remain open. You can always come to your pastor and say, you know what? I felt something, but I didn't respond. I want to respond now. We will receive you into the church even after the church has closed its doors. I want to thank you for coming to the altar. Thank the altar counselors who have come. You may return to your seats. The other way is to surrender all that we have, sacrificially give to God. This is a great place to sow into the kingdom of God. Great place to sow. God is doing mighty things here in this community and in this assembly of believers. And you may be sitting there, you're thinking, Pastor, I'm kind of short this week. You know what? The enemy will make you shorter next week. I'm just saying, give what it is that you lack. If you lack love, that's what you need to give. If you lack hope, you need to restore somebody else's hope. If you're financially broke, you need to give whatever you have to somebody else, and the church is a good conduit to place it. There are many stories in the Bible about where people were down to their last. A prophet would come along, and a prophet would say, make something for me first. It was not for him personally. It was for God. It was a sacrifice. So ladies and gentlemen, we want you to sacrificially give today. My prayer is that you already decided what you were going to do. If you're a visitor today, you're not a member of Faith Church, you should have received the connection card when you came through and were met by one of our friendly greeters. I want you to make sure you fill out that connection card. Let us know that this is your second or third visit. If you want to get a call from the pastor or you need to be saved, whatever it is, put it on that connection card. If you need a connection card, raise your hand and a card will be brought to you. Otherwise, we're going to be asking everybody in the church to give sacrificially. The ushers are going to be coming forward, and we're going to ask you to be faithful and true in your giving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. in their homes, in their works. I pray, Father, that you would multiply these gifts toward the kingdom and take a little, God, and make it great. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. Glory to God today. Our announcements for today are as follows. The last class of this round of new members uh, classes will be held this Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. So please join us via Zoom. 
Our baptism will be held on Sunday, June the 2nd at the end of our worship service. If you are a candidate for baptism, please remain after service right up here for a quick meeting. Youth on the Move will be on next Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. I want to celebrate because this is the Leaf, the Leaf Pantry is celebrating our second anniversary year. Glory to God. We just thank God for the vision um, of the Leaf Pantry and Urban Farm. And we just want to make sure that we always support, you can support them as well as missions in your giving. The Leaf Pantry uh, and Urban Farm, please save the date. Our next upcoming Pantry Day um, will be May 18th at, from 8 to 10 a.m. The Pantry will not be open after church today. The Pantry will also be closed starting April the 18th, and they will resume normal operations on April the 30th. It's coming. Our summer farmer's market it will be starting on June 14th, and it will be sponsored by Public Community Food Bank and our very own Mr. James. We have some items that we are in need of in the pantry. We need toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, laundry detergent, and dish detergent. We appreciate you so much. A big thank you to all of our amazing volunteers and generous do donors. We could not do this without you. Now this next announcement, I need y'all to like scream, shout, hallelujah. We are having Vacation Bible School. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. This year's theme is called Breaker Rock Beach, God's Rock. Solid faith in a world of shifting sand. The focus scripture is going to be Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I don't know if you noticed when you came in, in the foyer, Beverly has this nice little oh display God. out there. And guess what? Today is volunteer sign up for Vacation Bible School. Now, in order for this to be successful, we definitely want to reach out to the community. This is a community-driven event, but we need every one of you to help us to make this a success. So if you would please just pray and ask God about your specific area of expertise. The wonderful thing about <laughs> Vacation Bible School is you don't necessarily have to minister. You just find something that you are good at, and that is your ministry, and you bring that to the Vacation Bible School to be able to help make this event successful. As I stated before, there is a cute little display out in the foyer, so we are looking for volunteers to sign up. There will be a volunteer training in May, and pre-registration and registration will be in June. So please see Beverly or Fenitra for any questions. Now I was talking about, I love Vacation Bible School because we used to make all the little cute little knickknacks and you know, you would have all that. And so Beverly was like, I want to bring back like the pledge of the Bible, the pledge. And so I started saying, <laughs> I started saying the pledge to the Bible. She was like, look at you. You know, so I said, I'm going to tell you like I told Vaughn yesterday. I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't play with it. You better get it. <laughs> Those are our announcements for today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Vaughn, would you just come get her? Just come get her. <laughs> hey, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of another day of worship, and it's been an exciting one. I hope you have enjoyed worshiping with us today at Faith Church, and we hope you'll come again next Sunday. Hope you'll be on Zoom for a Bible study midweek. Wonderful experience. And I, I just want to add my two cents worth on uh, Vacation Bible School. It's special to me, too. We, we do VBS because it's not just a part of our children's ministry. It is a part of our church's outreach as a whole. It's not just a great opportunity for our kids, but it's a great opportunity for our friends and for our church, for our congregation, for our community. Sharing the gospel with 
our own kids as well as parents and kids in our community. Everybody in here is involved in some work area. Vacation Bible School is an opportunity for you to touch somebody in the community. It's an opportunity for those in evangelism to be engaged. It's a time for those who are involved in music to be engaged. It's a time for people in hospitality to be engaged. You have a gift. Use that gift to touch this community. People come up to me often during the pantry and other gatherings that we have and say, you know, I didn't, I didn't we've been here two years, and there are people come up and say, I didn't even know y'all were there. I didn't, I didn't, they ought to know, but assume they don't, and let's get the word, let's put it out there. And not just that we're here as a church, but that Jesus is here as a Savior. Amen. Somebody needs to know Jesus. And this is, this, is, this is an unchurched community. Birmingham's an unchurched community. We don't just want to go out and have somebody move from one church to here. We want somebody to move from unsaved to saved. Amen. That's our mission. That's our goal. And that's how come everything that everybody does has to be toward that end. We ain't got time for you know, for arguing about this and arguing about that and what color the walls are going to be. We've got to be really intentional about reaching lost people for Christ. And I'm going to tell you, it's not our creativity that's going to make it happen. It is the love of our Lord Jesus that is going to. We just have to give him entree into these places and into these lives. So I thank God for everybody. And I'm going to close and we'll say this. A person who never complains, didn't complain, but I just kind of went and hugged her yesterday, and, uh, and I said, uh, you know, thank you for what you do in service as a volunteer in the work that you do. And she said to me, she said, but you know I'm tired. Yeah, that, that, that kind of hit me right there because it means that we're, it means that 20% of the people in the church are doing 80% of the work. And we need to shift the burden. We need to share the burden. All right? All right. Let's bow our hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that there are a lot of people here today whose hearts are hurting. And I pray, Father, that you would just give them a peace that passes all understanding. Wipe their tears away. Fill them with the joy of the Lord. And Father, I know that there are many people in this place gathered in this place and online who don't have a clue about their future. The money is low. Their hope is lower. And I pray, Father, that you would just like wind get up underneath their wings and lift them up. I pray, Father, for this sweet couple in our church who is getting married. I pray for them. I pray that you would, you would cover their covenant relationship and that you would make them fruitful and happy and intentional about being a Christian husband and wife. I pray, Father, this morning for those who have lost loved ones this very week. Father, assure them that their loved ones are not lost, but they're in heaven, and they're celebrating and worshiping our Lord. And Father, you give them peace and let them know that. And Father, if none of us see each other again beyond today, know that we will all meet at another day and another place call heaven thank you for that prepared place help us to be prepared people and father we will be quick to give you honor glory and thanksgiving amen, amen. now stand to your feet yeah, you thought you got by that, didn't you? Nah, you ain't getting by that. Hands way up over your head and say after me, Lord.
I have heard the word. I am armed and dangerous. I know that heaven is real. And I'm going. Amen. God bless you. Give somebody the love of the Lord.